In this video, we will see animation, transitions and a special transition called morph. Let us learn about animation. Let's understand the base concept of what animation really is. So here is a simple presentation with six slides in it. When I run the presentation, what does PowerPoint do? It just waits for me to do something. And typically I click and then it goes to next slide. When it shows the slide, it shows all the objects on the slide all at once. Again, wait for me to click. Shows the next slide. So it's trigger and action. The commonest trigger we use is click. And the default action is next slide. So what happens on the last slide? There is nothing more to do. So when you click, it ends. That's how PowerPoint works. And now that we have understood it, we can use it to our advantage. For example, when I show this particular slide, the agenda slide, I don't want the entire agenda to be shown. I want to show the word agenda, then first click animation, second click transition, third click morph. This is a text way of doing it. Maybe the same thing I wanted to show here. PowerPoint, my photo, Nitin shown when the slide is shown. First click animation, second click transition, third click morph. These are objects. This is a text box. So let's see how to do it. So I click on this object. This is a group of objects, doesn't matter. You can add animation from here or here. We don't understand the difference. But remember, first time you are adding, whether you do it from here or here, doesn't matter. But if there is already an animation on an object, then you add from here is going to replace it. So, if you want the best practice and avoid confusion, always use this one. So, I'm going to add an animation, simple one called appear. Now, how do I know what happened? You go to animation pane. So, what is it saying? This object, the first object, first click actually. This is not an object number. This is click number. So, it's saying first click after the slide is shown, this object will be shown. Okay. Now, let's do that for this object. Again, I go and say happier. Second click, the word transitions will appear. And third click, again, this is a group. So, let me select the group and choose appear. So, now how will it work? When I show the presentation, anything which doesn't have any animation will be shown by default. Then it will wait. It will wait for my trigger. The next event is a click. Then it will say what to do in the next click. Oh, show the word animation. Wait for gain. Next click, what to do? Transition. Next click, morph. Now next click what? There is nothing else to do on the slide. So it will just go to the next slide. That's how animation works. Now if you apply the same thing here, there is just a single text box. I am going to apply the animation appear. You see the animation here. But notice here, although it is one click, when I show this particular presentation, it's waiting for me to click, yes. But when I click, what do you expect? All the three words, no. It comes one click, one word. How did that happen? Because it's a text box, it gets something special. So what is it saying? Yes, one click. But within that, it automatically added one one click extra for each paragraph. If you don't want that to happen, what do you do? You go to effect options and say, what do you want to do? Text animation. And this is the default by first level paragraph. If you don't want that, then you'll have to say as one object. And now when I click next, it's going to appear all of them in one click. 
Now sometimes you use animation for showing something step by step. I have three step process. First I want to do fill, then I want to do line, then I want to change the format of the shape text options. Three steps. I don't want to show all three together. Maybe I want to show the first step when the slide is shown, so I don't touch it. This one I want to show later. So again, appear. This one on the next click, so appear. And now it will work as expected. So first step is shown up front. Next click, next, next click, next. That's the way we use animation to reveal progressively and explain better. Now just as an example, there are four types of animation. So we have four of them here as well as here. Entrance, that means how does the object appear on the slide. If there is no entrance animation, that means along with the slide it is visible. Emphasis means when it's, once it is on the slide, does it do anything to attract attention? Then while it is on the screen, does it move from place A to place B? And then while the slide is still there, does it go away? Once the slide goes, all the objects go anyway. While the slide is there, does it exit? That's exit animation. So let's see. We will just apply each type of animation to this object on click. So I'm going to add a simple animation called fly in. And where should it fly in? From top, bottom, we can choose. These are effect options. Okay, now I'm going to say add animation. And while it is there, it should just teeter. Teeter means just shake. Okay, so notice what is happening here now. When I click on this object, nothing is selected. When I click on this object, it's saying it has two different animations. First click, this will happen. Second click, this will happen. How long will the teeter happen? Oh, one second. Okay, now let's add one more. I want it to move. So let's put a line. By default, there is a green and red dot. Green means where it will start, red is where it will end. By default, it's just vertically like this, but I want it to move from here to here. So notice it tells me where it is going to stop. There is a transparent version of that, so I can know exactly where I should put it. When you release the mouse button, that goes away. When you click on the red dot, it comes again. This way you can adjust it precisely. And finally, when I click next, I want it to disappear using, let's say, zoom. That means it will just zoom out. So now we have four animations, four clicks for the same object. Let's see this in action. It is waiting for the entrance animation. So when I click, it's going to come. Next one, it will teeter. Third one, it is going to move. And fourth one is going to zoom out. So that's in a nutshell how to use animation. Now let's talk about transitions. The difference between animation and transitions is that animation happens inside a slide. There's an animation pane, there are objects, you apply animation to them. Transitions happen between slides. So this is the previous slide, this is the next slide. So now when I go to transitions, it is basically saying page curl, which means it will move from this slide to this slide as though a page was turned in a book. That is between the slides. So let's see this in action. Previous slide, click. In between slides, the transition happened. How long the transition takes? can be controlled from here. So when do we use transitions? For example, I am showing before and after. It was a very polluting industry. Then we got rid of it, used alternate methods, and now 
it is nature which has reclaimed and climate change was reversed. So this is before, after. So I'm going to use a transition called crush. So now when I click on this slide, this is thrown away by using the crush transition. Another example. So the previous slide has a curtain. The next slide is the product which we are trying to introduce. And the second slide has a transition, which is curtains. By default, it takes six seconds. Now let's see how this looks. The curtain, and the curtain actually opens to unveil, reveal, introduce, launch the product. This is how you use transitions. And the important thing again is to know all the transitions. Just click on each one of them, click on preview and learn how each one of them looks visually. Same thing for all animations. When you have built that visual vocabulary, you'll be able to choose the right animation or transition in the right place. Finally, we will talk about morph. So morph is on the face of it looks like animation, but it's not. If you notice, morph is just one transition. So it is a transition, that means it works between two slides, but it does much more than a transition. So let's see what happens. I have a simple box on this slide. I want to move the box from here to here. I could have done that easily using an animation called lines and then moved it wherever I wanted. So this is easy. But suppose I wanted to not only move it here, resize it, rotate it and change its color. Animation cannot do all this. So let's start with the beginning position of the box. I'm going to duplicate the slide. Right now slide 13 and 14 are exactly the same. On the second slide, I do whatever changes I want to the object. So I made it bigger, rotated, put some color, done. Now in the second slide, I apply a transition called morph. And now let's see the impact. I'll actually do all of those, including change of color beautifully. So this is the purpose of morph. Morph also works with text. So let's look at this slide, which are just all characters from A to Z. The next slide has the word thank you written on it. Now if I apply morph, nothing will happen because we are trying to morph text. One extra step is to choose text or characters. And now notice what happens. The next slide has some of the characters from here. So it's actually going to find those characters and assemble the next slide. So this is how you use morph to your advantage. 